I have two friends who have been inseparable since high school. Although each of us pursued our own paths, our friendship not only endured but also thrived into adulthood. Out of the three rowdy teenagers we once were, Slavic became a successful entrepreneur. Alesian excelled as a dedicated athlete, and I found my place as a factory worker. It goes without saying that I was the last one to settle down. My relationships took a nosedive the moment my friends introduced their significant others into the picture. Suddenly, a simple laborer like me paled in comparison to the cafe owner and the promising athlete. At first, I was resentful of my friends, but eventually, I came to see the situation as a valuable filter for my life. Through trial and error, I found Vika, and she stayed. That's precisely why, when my inebriated wife whispered conspiratorially that Oleg's wife was cheating on him, I burst into laughter and dismissed it as a baseless story. Such situations seemed impossible. After all, my friend was doing well for himself, both financially and in terms of physical appearance. My wife, however, remained unconvinced. She confessed it herself, with some journalist, Vika insisted. I can even remember the name, you can ask Oleg, he knows the guy. Oh, come on. I brushed off the claim, sneaking a discreet glance at Oleg and his wife, who appeared genuinely content. Let's stay out of it and let them sort things out themselves, okay? I suggested to Vika. Vika nodded, clearly dissatisfied with my response. What do you want then? I asked her. My wife's persistent behavior was putting me in a difficult spot. Gossiping was not our group's style. After all, we considered ourselves mature adults. You should tell him. She's a liar. And I tell him myself. Vika frowned. But he won't believe me. I'm nobody to him. You, on the other hand, could ask him about that man she was with at the mall. Then she'll have to confess. No, you're being too loud. I replied, more forcefully than intended, catching the attention of our friends. We've had enough to drink. Let's go home, I suggested, hoping to change the subject. That night, we left in a taxi, and the matter was never brought up again. Vika briefly sulked but soon forgot about it. However, she began to pester me, saying, Where are your ambitions? Where's the desire to live a better life? I see success stories right in front of me. Maybe I should take up sports. It might be late, but you could ask Slavic for a job. Why not make a fresh start? She was relentless in her prodding, and it truly got on my nerves. I spoke to Vika with all the enthusiasm of a brick wall. Well, I may not have a lot of stars, but I get by. But if you want a more lavish life, there are job exchange sites on the internet, I mentioned. Vika retorted, and do your friend's wives not work? I countered, Slavka's wife runs a beauty salon. I mean, not only does she run it, but she even takes clients herself. With a sarcastic tone, she continued, very successfully married indeed. I heard Slavka's wife is running something more than just a salon, more like a brothel. I sighed, Vika. Why are we doing this again? They cheat on you and live the high life. Meanwhile, I can't even afford a trip to Turkey once a year, she replied bitterly. Vika waved her hand dismissively, making the conversation as unpleasant as possible. So I decided to have a chat with my friends and discovered an interesting detail. It turned out that my friends had been trying to protect me, but before their first conversation with my wife, she had attempted to flirt with Alesha. Slavic even showed me a text message where Vika had asked him to come over and fix our apartment's faucet because I was on duty. The text was no more than a week old, yet I had been told that she was the one being unfaithful. I couldn't help but exhale in frustration, and my friends empathetically understood. Oleg patted my shoulder, saying she wanted to cause chaos when things didn't work out with us. Slavic chimed in, and then she switched her attention to me. Sorry. Buddy, we've been played, Oleg concluded. Slavic offered kindly, so, are you going to confront her yourself, or do you want some assistance? I decided to make a witty remark. I'll come fix your faucet. You want to join me? We all chuckled, trying to lighten the mood. Slavic continued with a grin. That's how you'll catch us there. Slap me in the face, spank her on the ass. Oleshka will fall like a pro soccer player, and you won't be able to dig us out. Right? Oleg. Absolutely. 
a leg responded mechanically before playfully smacking Slavic's rear. Slava chimed in. I can hold her knee and then mine. But that's it. I love my wife. In the end, we decided to go for it. I walked in on my wife, Vika, with Slavka and a bottle of champagne in our bedroom. It was a surreal scene. Vika burst into tears immediately and then approached Slavka, suggesting they leave together. Get lost. Slavka retorted, I'd married. My wife turned to me, her mascara running down her face. Why did you come? She asked in confusion, fluttering her eyelashes. I had had enough. Don't push me to my limits. Leave on your own, or I'll drag you out by your hair, I warned her. Leave? Where to? She absent-mindedly waved her hands. To your mother's, or wherever you like. I don't care. We're getting a divorce, I declared firmly, ending the conversation. After the divorce, Vika tried to reconnect with me, but I just couldn't bear to hear about her attempts to seize happiness again. I was done with it. As it turned out, my response was the right one, as she tried to reconcile by claiming it was all a mistake. I simply responded with a dismissive, nobody cares, move along with your life. <laughs>